the attention to detail, the diversity, all those different little things that come together to pull that off is just unbelievable to me. Daily we clean the pumps and the skimmers of the mm -hmm. lagoon. So the water first flows into a skimmer basket with larger holes in it, mm -hmm. and then it goes through a filter pad, and then finally into the pump, which is also protected by another cage. Does that guy look familiar? That is me. Hard hat on. You don't see my bald head. That is definitely me. Hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Palm Professor here. I am here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at Phipps Conservatory for a project I was part of many, many years ago. The project itself was not directly for the conservatory, it's on their property, but it's called the Center for Sustainable Landscaping. They wanted to put together all the latest and greatest technology for sustainable green infrastructure and construction methods. And then it's used as a show place for people from around the world, architects, engineers, designers, manufacturers, everybody coming together to see the latest technology technology. We were part of that water management component, underground rainwater capture systems, wetland filtration systems, a huge infiltration area for excess rainwater. There's a ton of stuff that I'm going to be talking about throughout this vlog just because there's so many different things happening. One of the things I'm going to point out right away as I see it here, permeable asphalt over on one side, allowing some of that rainwater to soak into the subsoils. We have native vegetation, does not require mowing, does not require fertilizers, pesticides or anything like that and then we have this huge parking area here and on top of that is a large array of solar panels this is going to provide power for the building as well as any people that have electric vehicles that work at the facility but last time I was here oh my gosh this was just a construction site huge barren slope over here they were still working on some of this beautiful sandstone over here and this is actually taking water from some of these upper areas and then there's a huge bypass pipe that goes underneath all of this stuff which I believe is love all the reclaimed wood water quality looks great and this is stormwater massive beds of native vegetation in here there is an aeration system in here to help with that turnover and then all along this back edge this is our massive wetland filter so this system is responsible for managing a lot a lot of water here i mean it's taking all the water off of the roof of this incredible building as well as of the the other hard spaces up above all of this just blown away by this incredible feature you know i remember actually being out here working on this and just trying to see that overall vision of all this stuff when we're brought in on projects it's a little bit of a challenge because it's a war zone i mean <laughs> there's stuff all over the place there's equipment there's machines there's muck there's mud we're putting together all these different pieces and parts and everybody's got their own marching orders we were responsible for all of that water management stuff which is giving us that water quality inside of this but wow this really 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 looks phenomenal right now. The reason we really gotten connected with this project, it was because we have the same philosophies, working with the designers and the architects and understanding their goals. I mean, it fits perfectly exactly with what we were doing here. This is not only managing stormwater runoff, but this actual wetland is managing all the wastewater as well for this property. Right here by this parking lot this is where we have, I believe, 88,000 gallons of storage. So all of our aqua blocks, the only thing that was really huge here. They had some of those solar panels in. This building was under construction, not being completed. And then this was all traffic. All this was a massive staging area. Some of those original designs. Does that guy look familiar? That is me. Hard hat on. You don't see my bald head. That is definitely me putting in all those aqua blocks. It was pouring rain the entire day. This is awesome. 
This is a very impromptu and interruption to your video. Brian Helfrich and myself are excited to announce the Aquascape Hands-On Academy. And this is the hands-on area right here. This was originally created for the Sandbox Studio for the Aquascape Artists of the Year, but it's gonna be turned into a training academy for all people that wanna be contractors to come and learn with our crew. You're gonna see Chris, our crew, and how they build a one-day pond, and we're gonna show you how to do it in four hours. We were gonna have bleachers over here. People are gonna be able to get inside, get their hands dirty. And besides the 11 by 16 or 8 by 11, whatever yep. we decide to do for the one day pond, we're also gonna put in fountainscapes and a pondless waterfall. Come to the Aquascape Hands-On Training Academy this winter and work with us in a sandbox, actually getting your hands dirty and learning how to have a career with water features. Don't you wanna tell them about the other day? It's two days! The classroom day. <laughs> one day is gonna be hands-on in the sandbox. The other day is gonna be how to actually run a water feature business. Everything you need to know, 30 years of experience, 26 years at the helm, building water features, designing water features, selling water features, marketing water features, promoting water features, everything to do with running a water feature business. Oh, you said a lot in a short amount of time. We're gonna have yeah. a lot in two days. <laughs> Register, check out the link below. And now, back to the vlog. They have done just an incredible, incredible job here. Stabilizing all these slopes, very steep. The right vegetation, the right terracing, really blends in perfectly with the rest of the facility here. Spectacular rooftop garden, walking paths, native vegetation. Now we did a, another feature. It's on the other side of the building over here. So there's another 30,000 gallon reservoir over in that location. But just look at all the different ideas showing different stormwater management techniques. So here's that elevated view of the stormwater lagoon. This is showing that wetland filtration system located over here. And then all of this actually overflows into a subterranean reservoir which is located underneath that parking lot. You can see there's a bunch of trees and things on top of it. Then there's a huge infiltration area over here, which is actually a rain garden. So that's gonna handle any of the excess water. So this is a treatment train concept. We're trying to filter and clean the water in as many stages as possible before we get it into a storage tank. Once it's in the storage tank, then we could reutilize that water for different purposes. This is gonna overflow into that infiltration area, rain garden. And that's because of, look at this incredible, ravine over here so one of the challenges that they were having here during the construction process was coming up with a plan to protect the runoff from going in and overwhelming this ravine system and causing unnecessary erosion by capturing storing slowing the water down we're able to do that but this looks just dramatically dramatically different than last time i was here and then we also have a series of cast iron lids going throughout this entire parking area and that is for access and inspection points for the tank system down inside all right everybody just met up with julia hagel she is responsible for taking care of this incredible property so julia could you give us a little bit of information on kind of what you have to do because it's it's really unique i mean the stuff that you're doing here there's really no rule book really to follow Correct. i mean everything that you're doing is brand new and everybody's looking forward to all that type of information you know we've got our lagoon here it's actually pretty easy to maintain really my team daily we clean the pumps and the skimmers of the mm -hmm. lagoon so the water first flows into a skimmer basket with larger holes in it mm -hmm. and then it goes through a filter pad and then finally into the pump which is also protected by another cage and you know close it on up right now we do have our pumps off because the water level is so low. Okay. It's barely reaching the pump. So as far as Got to it. like not burn the pumps out. Is it out, just lack of precipitation because yeah. this is part of a stormwater system? Right. Okay. Lack of rain. So yep. when we get really rainy days, weeks, you know, the water level will come up. Um, we have a couple indicators to see. Okay. You know, yeah. Gotcha. Judge it, so. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Could we take a walk over and take a look at those? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Let's do that. When the pumps are, are running hard and we can hear them sucking in air, mm -hmm. we know 
know the water level's too low. Okay. Um, yeah, when I came walking up, I did notice that the skimmers are visible there. So yep, yeah, that's yeah. not letting enough water in. Right. And because of the mission here, you don't want to utilize city water to refill this, right? I mean, this is 100% storm water. Yep. If you have it, it's good. If yep. it's not available, it doesn't operate. Right, right. Okay. Which is fine. I yeah. mean, it's really just some like water features that are mm -hmm. turned off right now. When the water is high, how, how high does it actually get? It will get up. You'll probably see like about that much of the rock. What do you have to do with all the vegetation here? So all the cattails, the pickerel rush and all that type of stuff. I really don't ever see them do anything. Um, working with these plants at okay. all. I really think that they just... Self-perpetuate. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's their life cycle. They die off. They yeah. come back. Which so. is great. I mean, if you can get away with that, I mean, that's really the ultimate goal the yeah. least amount of maintenance and I know that was one of the design perspectives is you want to try to you know save resources and that includes maintenance and everything yeah I mean, you yeah want to cut, cut that out human hours yeah. yeah exactly so this is some of the stuff that I was pointing out so this is an overflow you can see there's a little curb cut here rainwater is going to fall in here these are permeable you can see these joints are vegetated they also have a very granular material inside of them it allows water to seep through those joints there's a little curb right here so the water will saturate this and then from here any excess water is going to overflow and it's going to kind of get trapped in this little corner it's going to go through that curb cut or it's going to go this way and go through a curb cut over on that side so the idea is to capture slow down that water but underneath all this stuff is our aqua box you can see the elevation here so during a heavy rain water is going to fill up inside of this and then if it reaches that certain spillover point it's going to go down into this little beehive strainer here and it's going to go into an infiltration area which is located on this side so that area is using our aqua box as well, but there is no rubber membrane associated with it. That means is those blocks are going to fill up with water. Those blocks are hollow. They create a structural void space. I mean, it's going to slowly percolate down into the subsoil. Very similar if you're familiar with septic systems and things like that. So it's a big infiltration area. Now inside of here, there's another cast iron grate over in this corner. And then there's going to be a series of clean outs and access points. You can see one right there. So that little black cap. That is going to go straight down into all those aqua blocks. We put those in several different locations for periodic checking and maintenance. And then this here is also one of the larger connections into that underground system. But I just love looking at all this stuff. And again, almost a decade ago, when we were out here building aqua blocks, right in this area here, we had a huge area just filled up with aqua blocks along this whole section. And then we were doing our construction over in this section here. Love going back and checking out old projects. What a perfect setting for this facility. Phipps Conservatory. Love all the stuff that they've done inside of there. It's always one of my favorite things to do. Hitting the conservatories in the Chicagoland area as well as other ones out of state. Just incredible. Just the technology, the attention to detail, the diversity, all those different little things that come together to pull that off is just unbelievable to me. And then tucked right next to it is the incredible Center for Sustainable Landscapes. The latest and greatest technology for green infrastructure, stormwater management, less usage of raw materials and more recycling, more efficient usage of electricity, all these different concepts working together. And I tell you what, when it's done properly, it is a home run. This facility is just un unbelievable. Can't wait to get back because I know it's going to be an evolving kind of adventure for many, many, many years to come. Mm -hmm.